Kip Sorensen here with Journey Team. We're going to take a quick look at what does it mean to use private channels within Microsoft Teams. So within the Microsoft uh, Teams application, I can actually click on the ellipses, add a channel, and we have new functionality in this drop-down labeled privacy. As you can see here, this is a, I'm going to give it a label here, private channel. I can select a standard or I can choose private. When I choose private, we'll be then asked which members I would like to add to this channel. I can select members of the existing 365 group. So in this example, it's kind of grayed out here, but I have the SharePoint KM team. I can only select people from that group. If they're not part of that group, I do not see them. Okay, so this is a subset of permissions within the 365 group itself. In this example, I'll add Brent Tenney. I can then select the role that he will play within the private channel, whether it be a member and or an owner. New channel will be created, it has a lock, and then ultimately um, only Brent and I will be able to see this. This channel will not show up for members uh, or for uh, members of the team that are not part of this actual channel itself. I get a secured conversation and I get secured files. This is the part where I think Microsoft may have not done uh, or may have not taken the best approach. This private channel, if we click on open in SharePoint, it actually provisions somewhat of a hybrid. I'm not even sure what it is quite. I mean, it, for all intents and purposes, it looks exactly like a site collection. So you'll see here sites SP team dash private channels and a new site collection was provisioned with the document library inside. The permissions of this site collection are our SharePoint site collection permissions with Brent and I automatically being added members within the actual site itself. This is a full blown site. So if I go to site contents, I can see the list in the libraries within the site. I can create additional lists. I can do an array of different things from within the actual site collection itself. The other drawback is this site collection does not show up in the administration section of Office 365. The modern sites, it does not show under modern sites and it does not show under site uh, classic sites. So it's almost somewhat of a rogue site that is sitting within um, our given tenant. Now, if I go back to Teams and I, and I delete this private channel, it automatically then deletes the site collection that was associated with it. Let me cover a couple other nuances. If I'm the owner of this SharePoint team, I can allow, well, let's go into the settings. If I go into my settings under member permissions, I can change whether members of this team have the ability to create private channels, which means that a member could create a private channel and not include the owner, and I would not be able to see that channel. So let me walk through it one more time. A member can create a private channel, and if the owner's not included, I will not be able to see the channel within the team. Now, I can click on channels within the settings area, and I can see the channel here. I just can't do anything with it other than see who the owners are and delete the possible channel. Okay. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments and we'll be able to uh, get back to you guys. But that is the summary of what it is to use private channels within Microsoft Teams.